I think there's a lot of really good feedback around the recent UI change. I'm talking about the layout UI in Webflow that launched last week. And I wanna try approaching this a little differently. The most common themes I'm seeing are one, the UI is worse with text instead of icons. Two, the sort of nine box thing isn't as intuitive as 36 buttons. Three, the assumption that Webflow isn't testing or talking to customers. And then four, just this general sentiment that Webflow is focusing on the wrong stuff and shouldn't be changing the UI on all of us, pulling the rug out from under the thing. So I think it's time we have a conversation, including the pros and the cons of changes like this. One, the UI was better with icons. I agree in some cases. In fact, icons plus text is like the gold standard when you have real estate, when you have the room to build that out. But in this case, for setting the display property in the style panel, every single pixel counts. And that's exactly why icons there make no sense. The question isn't what's the number, the minimum number of pixels you need for icons to fit as many options as possible. Adobe already does that with InDesign. But the question is, what's the minimum number of pixels you need to communicate what this button does? That's it. Think about this. No one's confused by the icons for italic text or underline, but that's because that design language is common. But overwhelmingly, icons alone do not communicate complexity very well, especially in pro apps, and especially with something as complex as display settings. Something that, when it's presented in clear text, anyone could Google or talk about with developers and understand. Try this thought experiment. You pull two groups of 100 designers and developers who are learning and using CSS. The first 100 get simple words like block or flex, as in display block or display flex, industry standard terms. And the second 100 get icons for a movie theater, a pause button, and the world's least challenging game of tic-tac-toe. You know how that'll turn out. Clear text that matches industry terminology and a new dropdown for even more control, I would take that any day of the week. Okay, what about the nine box? This is, I will admit, I too over the years got used to seeing over 200 buttons every time I wanted to align and justify anything. But the reason a nine box makes so much sense though, it really does, is it's both more intuitive and more powerful and faster, by the way. It often does in one click what used to require multiple steps. Think flex. Instead of align and then justify, with the nine box, it's just one click. To say nothing about the modifier keys, which is significantly more powerful than the old UI. Now, does it take a little longer to learn the edge cases? Sure, but it's all there. If I want the items in a container to glue to the right and the vertical center, do I want to hunt around two different rows of 70 buttons, or do I just want to click in the nine box where I want the stuff to go? This is the kind of stuff, this is the kind of UI where visual development wins every time. And I get it. Some people aren't fans of Figma's UI and some of the other stuff that's out there, but the nine box works. It's also, by the way, how great design evolves. Ask any Windows user, myself included, who said the Mac OS dock was inferior to a start menu for the first decade that both existed. Then take a close look at Windows 11. Great product design converges around interfaces that make sense. And great product design takes on the risk of pissing off some users to build a better product. Now, there are edge cases where you're going to need an extra click here or going to a drop down over there, but as you use it more and more, it gets so much faster than the old interface and certainly more intuitive. Okay, does Webflow test with users? Yes, obsessively, and by the way, the people making decisions about this interface, this didn't come from a room of advisors or consultants. This was built and user tested and iterated upon. This was all done for Webflow designers and developers by Webflow designers and developers who happen to work at Webflow. Webflow is building the wrong stuff. Look, a lot of people watching this are likely those who've used Webflow for a while. I've been using it since 2014. And one of the most important product design principles we all could use a reminder about is that we shouldn't always choose the thing that everyone's gonna like, especially in that moment. Product design is so much more, it's way more about systems and sequencing. How does what you ship now fit into a more powerful and cohesive vision for something that you know is shipping in six months or 12 months or 24? There is nothing more fundamental, nothing more critical to web development than layout. Nothing else matters if you can't build the layout. So when someone says, why are they focusing on this? I wanna see what work they're doing in Webflow that doesn't begin and end with production grade layouts. 
Layout is an area that needs really big thinking, tons of change over time. And I can't wait for it to continue to improve, not just at Webflow, but layouts overall on the web. And that leads me to my last point, the maybe the most important point, which is change. Because in even the best cases, change can feel jarring. It's completely valid. We get so used to a thing being a certain way that even when something's better or faster, our minds do this thing, our inner monologue says, that's not right. That's not what I expected. And it's that kind of friction. That's what usually feels off. But we take it further. And we sort of work backwards from there to rationalize why we don't like that new thing. I liked it better before, we say. And the new version of whatever is awful. And they don't care about users. A lot of perfectly valid opinions, even if some of those opinions are wrong. But here's my opinion. Change can be good. Change lets us try new things and think a little bit differently. And as someone who's been on the receiving end of changes that Webflow has shipped since far before I joined the team, and as someone who's looking forward to the ridiculously powerful things coming after I've left, I can say with total certainty that the vast majority of changes like this, even with some early friction from, from me as well, that these kinds of changes push things forward. That's the trade-off you have to make. Forget Webflow, this applies to so much more stuff in life and in business and product. On one hand, do you keep the thing the way it is because you know there's comfort there? Or do you make the change you know is right, the one you've thought about and tested and studied and obsessed over and refined, the one that might be faster and better, but even if it means that some of your diehard fans who love the thing you build and rely on it to earn a living, even if it means it's gonna cause them a little friction. and. As someone who doesn't understand how it's even possible to ship at the velocity we've been seeing from Webflow lately, I've never been more confident in the future of Webflow's platform. But it's not for everyone. It really isn't. If these kinds of changes, especially at a fast velocity, if that stuff really bothers you, you are, of course, entitled to use any number of significantly less powerful platforms to build web layouts, platforms that are easier to use. But Powerful platforms change. Powerful libraries change. Pro development is constantly improving, even if at times it's hard to keep up. But I don't use Webflow because it's easy. I use Webflow because it gives me the power and the control over exactly what I want to build. And that power isn't limited to the UI we thought was the best in 2013, or the one for Flex in 2015, or the refresh in 2018, or Grid, or Quick Stack, or what we have today. And I'll run my business on Webflow because the trade-offs for that power are 100% worth it. Anyway, I'd love to hear what you think. Thank you so much for taking the time. Take care.